I like what's happening over here. Pretty nice, huh? Well, good people, this is my very first sound bar. Let's talk about that. But first, big thanks to Panasonic for sponsoring this video. They make audio products. Who knew? I've been using their cameras for years, but now I've got this sound bar in my space and I've always been a headphone and a headset type of guy because of private listening, because of variable sound signatures you can get with different headphones and different amplifiers. And I never really gravitate towards speakers because of their larger footprint on the desk and lots of wiring needing to connect that to the source and them together, which is why the soundbar is such a unique uh, like audio element because of its footprint. You simply place it under your monitor or TV and that's it. There's no need to space out speakers in the perfect position. It's all done in this like center element. But in this video, let's talk about my experience with the soundbar, but more importantly, general guidelines on how to set up and position the soundbar properly in your space to get the most out of it that can be applied to all types of audio products when it comes to soundbars. So this sound slayer, obviously a gaming soundbar with a name like that, but physically looks nothing like a gaming product, which in my opinion is a good thing. It's a pretty simple solution with a plastic housing, some fabric at the front, no crazy branding all over the place, which I appreciate, just the Panasonic model name, plus the Dolby Atomos, DTSX Virtual and DTSX Support. Everything is controlled with this handy, <laughs> The control is pretty handy, but if you displace it, we have buttons on the side of the body that lets you turn it on, adjust volume, and change the input device because this thing not only supports HDMI and an optical in, but also has Bluetooth support so you can connect your smartphone and switch the sources on the body. I absolutely love the footprint. It goes beneath my monitor. It doesn't stick out. It doesn't attract attention, but the sound, yeah, you can definitely feel the sound. I'm not sure about other sound bars, but this one doesn't come with any cables aside from your power cable. So if you're running this with the HDMI or optical, you need those cables prepared. But now let's talk placement. And to my surprise, the sound change is pretty drastic depending on how far or close you have the sound bar to you, obviously. But there are other things that you have to take into consideration. So first of all, sound bars are known to produce good vertical sound in terms of not just bouncing audio directly into you and giving you that stereo representation, but filling the room with audio to give you a larger audio source environment. And that's actually pretty impressive coming from such a tiny unit. I recommend placing the sound bar not directly underneath the monitor because that verticality might be slightly blocked. And if you have the space to position the sound bar slightly more forward, so the monitor isn't blocking the sound. Volume is also a really important factor, making sure that you get this surround sound immersion with a sound bar, because if the volume is too low, it sounds like a stereo speaker right in front of you. As soon as you turn that up, whew, audio starts to bounce off and the whole room becomes the source. Just for reference, I'm running the sound bar at 100%, but in Windows volume control panel, I'm running it at 10%. So that means that this thing has a lot more power that I'm not utilizing and also be mindful that there is that dual volume adjustment, one on the body of the sound bar itself and one in the software. We'll get into the sound demo in just a little bit, but another thing I noticed is that I had this massive soft box beside the table and when that was here, it sounded very off because the right channel, you know, where audio can just like travel from here and bounce around. Whereas on the left side, we had that massive object that was blocking the proper projection of audio. And so I would recommend not having anything too large, too close to the sound bar and potentially have the sound bar somewhere in the center of the room to give you the best uh, like rebounds of that audio. For example, in this configuration with my room wider this way, when I'm slightly further away from the sound bar, it gives me really nice stereo sound imaging uh, where you don't really, you can't tell where the speaker is in front of you. It's like this big audio source in front of you and not just like tiny speakers. But when I relocated the sound bar to my other wall where it is wider uh, or longer backwards, I had this much better like rear channel definition and depth than I had with the room set up in this configuration. So room size and placement are important, especially for console gamers who are slightly further away and you can hear more of that uh, rebounds of the audio. Whereas 
For PC gamers like myself, this thing right in front of you, regardless of where it is in my room, it doesn't make that of a significant difference. It's only when you move back, you start to pick up some of the details in the rear channels and side channels the soundbar is trying to reproduce and bounce around your environment. Obviously it's not for private listening, that's what headphones are for, but for immersive, filling the room with sound, that's what speakers and soundbars are for. And I've discovered the most amazing use of the soundbar is with Beat Saber in VR, especially because your point of view is locked to the center, so you're not moving around and you're disturbing the, the point of view of where the audio is coming from. So people can watch your game and they can listen to music. It's all fun. So now let's jump into some games and hear the soundbar with all of its game modes. And another thing to mention is Dolby Atmos support on the soundbar is present, but the list of games for Dolby Atmos is still fairly limited. Dolby Atmos, by the way, is another form of simulating surround sound with that whole bouncing of audio, giving you rear channels, giving you good height and vertical audio. And in certain games that works, in others, as you'll hear, not so much. So I hope you enjoyed that, but a few things to talk about is that I prefer 3D surround to be always on. I find the soundstage expansion is not too aggressive, it's just natural and it's nice. With it off, it sounds like it's a stereo speaker in front of you without the, the width that I would expect. I also prefer to enable the clear dialogue option, which can be enabled independently of other settings, which is nice. It just boosts the high end slightly. So in bass heavy situations, it might drown out the vocals in games, especially when there's uh, speech and voice and stuff like that. So clear dialogue helps to boost those treble frequencies. So you have a bit, bit of a balanced audio representation, especially when you're sitting really close to the soundbar, like in this PC setting. If you're slightly further back, I find the bass does bounce out around the room slightly more. So the clear dialogue option still helps but I would say it's not as necessary. My perception of directionality when I'm sitting close to the soundbar, you can clearly hear that stereo side-to-side -side movement and audio, but if you're slightly further back, that stereo side-to-side -side movement is slightly less evident, which means that it's a more natural like transition between left and right channels, for example, and uh, I'd still find the soundbar to be more enjoyable when you're further back. So like console enjoyment, movies enjoyment if you have this connected to a TV, but from, from like a PC perspective, um, directionality and especially like the rear channels are not as evident when you're like arms laying distance away from it, but 
the verticality, the vertical channel is very well defined even when you're close to the soundbar. I find the bass a little bit too powerful when I'm sitting close by, so I can reduce it with the subwoofer uh, plus and minus on the remote control, which is great. I love the flexibility and I can turn it up again when I'm sitting further back. Now, my recommendation for the optimal listening experience for the PC user is to have a slightly wider desk so that you can be slightly further away from it. Whereas here, I feel like I'm a bit too close. And on my editing desk, when I had the speaker there, it was much better. It didn't feel so cramped in terms of audio, like firing right into your face. You would think that this much room doesn't make a difference, but it does. The soundbar has a bit more room to breathe and audio doesn't feel as direct. Now, a few new things that I was not aware of before using an HDMI audio device is that it creates a separate monitor in your NVIDIA control panel or AMD, not sure about AMD actually, which you cannot disable. So it will always create like this different window somewhere around your main display that you cannot remove and sometimes you, your cursor would be lost, sometimes your windows would be sent into the void. This soundbar has a 20 minute auto shutdown cycle, which you can disable, but uh, it doesn't wake up with audio source. You have to manually press the on button on the device or on the remote. Some users have reported the soundbar when it auto shuts down, it flickers the monitor, and that is because you probably have the soundbar connected into the monitor instead of into your graphics card. The language on the remote does not match the language in the documentation manual, but not to worry, here's the guide for your FPS, RPG, and voice modes. And lastly, this really powerful big audio that can be achieved with the soundbar is great for immersion, it's great for like just enjoying your audio in game, movies, music, whatever, but it's not good for competitive genres. I tried CSGO with this thing and like it's really loud and you can kind of hear where everything is, but nowhere near do you get the same audio advantage as you would with a standard pair of stereo headphones. For competitive awareness, I would say it's quite poor, even for open world games where you have some rear channels, some verticality in audio too, headphones are the way to go for competitive. All right, so that's my experience with the Sound Slayer. Really interesting audio results from the placement of the soundbar. I didn't realize that it would make such a huge difference, especially when I'm slightly further away from it. But if you're using a soundbar for any of your entertainment audio needs, gaming, mu music, or movies, let me know what your experience is like and what's your optimal positioning and like placement of it. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Again, thanks to Panasonic for sponsoring this video. And uh, yeah, check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.